Hello, everybody. Great to be here. Welcome to the education session. My name is Volker Hilsheimer, and with me all the way from the sunny side of the center of Oslo is Rickard from our UI team at the Qt company. Hi, Rickard. Hello, Volker. Yeah, it's, uh, it looks sunny on my back uh, drop image here, but it's actually snowy outside if I look outside my window. So It is November. Yeah. Okay, Volker, let's spend like 20, 25 minutes, talk a little bit about desktop development with Qt and uh, compare a little bit widgets with Qt controls too and uh, see how easy it is to style or create new controls. Yes, we are this year celebrating 25 years of Qt widgets actually. Um, 25 years is how old Qt is about and widgets have been there from the very beginning and we have seen lots and lots of great desktop applications being developed with Qt widgets over the time open source applications, much of KDE applications, but also lots and lots of uh, professional applications developed by our customers and by our users. Qt Quick, on the other hand, is, uh, well, it's also not exactly young and new. It's also already a couple of uh, years around, 10 years, I think, ago, roughly, we started with that. And uh, the idea of Qt Quick is uh, fundamentally different from Qt Widgets. Isn't that so, Ricard? Yeah, uh, fundamentally different in the way that it's uh, based on QML and it's uh, somewhat easier, I would say, to uh, construct and develop a user interface using QML and controls too, uh, rather than diving into C++ and widgets perhaps. Um, but because controls was sort of designed from the ground up to focus on embedded and touch platforms. I mean, we already had widgets for, uh, for desktop development at that point and we needed something for the mobile and embedded. So a lot of controls have sort of been focused and tailored towards that. But uh, now with Qt 6, we have decided to make a change uh, on this. And uh, we also want to make controls to a viable and good alternative for writing desktop applications. Um, so what we have done uh, is that for Qt 6, we have decided to ship two new native styles with Qt. And that is a style for Mac OS and a style for Windows. So uh, I want to quickly show you how those new styles look like. So what I've done is that I have created a little test application, demo application uh, called Desktop Gallery. It's just an application window and a scroll view. And we have some rows here where I show all the controls or most of the controls that we have in controls too. And what I want to do is to just start and show how this uh, application look with the basic style. The basic style is the style that used to be called the default style, but Qt6 is uh, called the basic style. And this is how it looks, uh, which is okayish, I would say. But if you look at the style closely, you notice that they are kind of big, like the radio buttons here are really big. The slider handle here is really big. And this is not surprising because this style and most of the other styles were designed for touch platforms, meant to be pressed by your finger, basically. But uh, let's run this same application once more, and now I can use the new Mac OS style. In so you're running, obviously, on Mac OS. We can see that here from the cute creator look and feel. Yeah, I do. And I'm also running in the dark mode style. So when I run this application now, you will see that it's uh, showing how it look in dark mode. Wow. And that yeah, looks native. That looks a lot more native and a lot more tailored for desktop, I would say, and for pointing with the mouse and hitting the different controls with a mouse. And looks kind of good, I would say. I'm happy with it. And uh, like you can say, it looks a little looks a little bit different than widgets as well, because we have also taken the opportunity to brush up some small details here and there, like the sliders are connected here at the corner, and you can also see that the slider handle here fades in and out like they're supposed to do. Um, yeah, you can see the focus frame here animates as it jumps around, starts off big, grows smaller, and fades in. And those are the kind of things that is really fun and easy to do with QML and the styling framework in controls. This doesn't take much time to do, and that's what makes it so nice and easy and a good framework for developing UIs because it's so uh, straightforward to do such things. It doesn't take a lot of time. And Volker, if you take a look at Widget, for example, it will take a lot more effort, wouldn't you say, if you were to create styling or style a widget there with widgets? 
Well, widgets have, of course, native look and feel. Um, that was always one of the strengths of Qt widgets. Um, even though we are having an emulating toolkit, we are not using any native controls. Um, when you're building your UI, you are, you're getting the full power of Qt and of customizability because everything we do is basically written in C++ um, and using our, our style API. Um, but to be honest, uh, some of the things that you just showed, I would have a very hard time um, replicating in, in a Qt widget user interface. So what I'm showing here is it's just our, our style sheet example. So one of the nice things we have in the Qt widgets UI is that we can apply a style sheet, which is kind of CSS syntax to a user interface and then customize things that way. And we, of course, as you can see here, I'm also running on macOS with a with a light mode here. We do have native controls, and we see that we have the focus frame. But what you showed, for instance, with this nice animation of the focus frame, that is not something that we have with the macOS style today in the widgets world. So I can do things with a style sheet, like for instance, um, if I just uh, apply a certain style sheet to push buttons. Um, for instance, here in this case, I'm, I'm setting the background to have a radial gradient from, from white to green. And if I apply that style sheet, you see that I do lose, of course, my native look and feel for those push buttons. Now you can't combine all the different things necessarily um, together, but you know it, it gives me it gives me the ability to do a lot of customization. And there are certain things that I can make also using the style sheet. Um, for instance, if I want to show hovered buttons in a slightly different way to make them glow a little bit by giving them a bigger radius here, as you can see, then um, this can also be done with style sheet. But it is a pretty harsh transition here. It goes from the from the normal state to the hovered state. Immediately, there is no nice smooth animation here. And if I would like to do something like that, I would not be able to use style sheets, definitely. Um, I would have to implement my own queue style, subclass in C++, start timers, watch for events and handle events, and do a lot of plumbing and infrastructure coding just to get these different things connected correctly. And, and when I start doing that, I have to do it. There is no designer in the world that would start writing Q style subclasses and, and implement uh, event handlers and these kind of things in C++. So if I want to do these things in, in the widgets world, um, we have a much stronger division of, of work between the designers that want to you know, have a wonderful user interface for their users and the developers that somehow have to work with the input from, from that side rather than a collaborative way of working, which I understand is exactly what we have done with Qt widgets, uh, with Qt Quick and with QML, designer yeah. developer workflow. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, QML as a language is almost, almost designed to be easy to, do, to use for uh, designers as well and to bring designers and developers closer together so they can work on and share the same code and look at the same code while they're creating the style and so that way sort of shorten the iteration cycle between the designer and the development and uh, i think the way it has been is that it's uh, so easy now that all the designer can almost go ahead into the code as well and understand what's going on and even tweak and modify but uh, yeah let's uh, take a look at that example that you wrote uh, for this button and uh, see how we could do the same for uh, controls if i share my screen again Let's go in here and let's say now that I want to create a button too and I want to customize it. Now there are several ways to create a style for controls as well. I mean, you can, can go ahead and create a full blown style or a style plugin if you want to, but if you only want to do the same things as you did, just tweak a little bit of some of the existing controls already in the application, there's a much mm -hmm. easier way. You can just basically create your own delegates and assign it directly to the control. So let's go ahead and create a, a button, like an um, alert button, for example, that has a little bit of animation, a pulsating text, for example, and combine that with a native button and see how that would, would uh, look like. So uh, let's start by creating a separate row for this and uh, give it a little bit of spacing here. And uh, then I can create a button that I want to customize like this. Let's give it a little ID. And the text should be, oops. Uh, 
can be like alert. This would be an alert button, a big button. And okay, let's just see how this looks so far. So have you, here you have okay. it that we created, sort of not customized yet. But uh, okay, let's change the foreground on this button to be something completely different. And that is very easy. You basically can just set a different content item on it like this. Then I keep the same background as before, the native background, but I want a new item to be on top, basically. And so I say that the text should be the same as the button text. I need to set the horizontal alignment centered on the background. And I want to make a big button so we can really see that this is an important alert button. So uh, let's increase the font size to be a little bit bigger. It can even be bold. And OK, let's see so far how it looks. OK, that's the kind of thing I can do with the style sheet as well, right? Yeah, that you can okay. do. Uh, so let's uh, okay pimp this up a little bit more by adding a little animation, a little flash to it, basically. So uh, I want to make the text become pulsating, so it pulsates from white to red, for example. So I just create a color animation. Oh, it actually auto completes for me now. Good. Yeah, I want it from white to red. Uh, and I want the properties to be, I want to animate the color basically. And I want to animate the button content item. This is this content item here. Mm -hmm. So if I'm targeting this text. I say that I want to animate from the color from white to red. And the duration can be a little bit more, I think, 500. And I want it to be running when the application is running. And it should loop all the time. So that is animation.infinite. OK, let's see how that works. There we go. OK. There you go. That definitely, uh, definitely captures attention, yes. Exactly. And you can see how few lines of code this is, right? <clears throat> I just throw in a color animation, adjust some properties, and there it goes animating. And that's the beauty of QML, and that's the beauty of the styling framework in controls uh, as well. It's so easy, and you can see that you're mixing native background, uh, custom foreground. You can easily change both the foreground and the background and mix mm. them up. And it's just a fun creative process, I would say, to do that. And it's also fully integrated here. You don't have to deal with C++ and widgets and styles and um, you know another language or, or another concept uh, like UI files, for instance, in, in the widgets world. Everything is completely integrated, so your designer can look at your code and see exactly what's going on. This color isn't quite on brand, or we need to make the animation a bit slower. They can make that change directly themselves, even if they don't, you know, are fully familiar with with QML and Qt Quick Controls. Exactly. Yeah. You can go in and basically read the code and understand what's going on. It's not, not, it's not that foreign, you can say, like, mm. if they have to dive into C++ or QStyle or, like, this uh, huge uh, file with enumerations and so forth. Mm. It's easier for them to grasp this code. OK. So how about custom controls? One of the things we know from desktop applications is that there is a lot of domain-specific stuff that people need to do with these applications. So combining or building custom controls that do specialized things. Um, that is something people have been doing for decades now with Qt widgets. How about how about Qt Quick Controls there? Yeah, uh, creating your own controls with Qt Quick Controls is pretty easy, I would say. Uh, I would think uh, in terms of composition instead of inheritance, perhaps, because right now there is not a public C++ API for controls, so you would work in QML code. Uh, this is about to change uh, eventually. We are have plans of opening up the C++ APIs. But for now, you would go into QML and you, uh, use composition. And uh, let's say, for example, that we want to create a new controller text field or search field. That is just a plain text field that has a little uh, magnifier glass inside uh, at one of the corners, like a search is supposed to be. Those are one of the controls that we don't currently have in uh, controls uh, today. 
So for doing that, I would just, uh, yeah, I can just continue here, create a text field like this, start off with mm -hmm. the text field, and give name and text to the search, for example. And what I can do now is that I can set uh, what we call a left padding here. So what I'm saying with this is that I want to push the text a little bit to the right to make room for this magnifier glass that I plan to have on the left side. So I can start this up and we can see how it looks like. And now you see there's a little bit space here. I can add a little bit more perhaps so it's easier to see. Okay, so your strategy with customizing controls is to is to um, compose different quick elements together, quick items together, and you know use the existing rich set of functionality that we have already, and and base it on top of that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's the easy approach, and then everything will look uh, follow the uh, the style that you have applied. For example, if you have applied a native style, it will look mm -hmm. like belongs in that native style too. All right, so let's continue this uh, component. I want to create the magnifier glass, and to do this simple, just for the sake of this uh, demo, I'm just going to create a little rectangle or a rounded rectangle and put a question mark inside it. So let's just do that. I create a little rectangle here. Um, let's just place it a little bit inside the text field. I want the width to be yeah, 15, the height to be the same, so this is going to be uh, Rounded, and the radius can be the same too. So now I've created like a little rounded rectangle, and in here I want to create this question mark text that's supposed to be centered inside a parent. So composition is anyway a natural and and you know typical way of building things in Qt Quick. I see that here you. You nest a, a rectangle into a text field, and in the in the rectangle you add some text. So you you're building these different components together using composition. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Let's just run it and see how it looks like. And here we go. Here we have a search field. Okay. More from the side. And now this is a now I just uh, modified this single control here. But let's say I want to convert it into a component that I can reuse several times in my application, for example. Mm -hmm. So the way I would do that is I would create a new file. That's the new component I'm going to create. Uh, let's call it search field. Search field. Yeah. Qman. Kitty. And then I can go back and copy the search field right here. And then put it inside. And since I'm using a text field already, I need to import Qt Quick controls. And with Qt 6, you no longer need to add version numbers. So we can remove this. That's like, neat. That's neat, yeah. And I also need to add this file to my resources here. So, search like this. And now go into my new file again. I can add a couple of search fields. Search field one. And let's make another just to show that now it's a, like a reusable control inside your application like this. All right. Search nice. Fields. That's like the fast and easy approach to create your own custom control uh, alongside other controls in your style. So, I don't know, with widgets, it's probably a little bit more effort, don't you think, Walker? Well, with, with widgets, subclassing Q widget or an existing widget and, and customizing things by re implementing event handlers, that is how we in the Qt project and the Qt company build all the widgets that are part of Qt already. We are not wrapping native um, controls, we are building everything um, ourselves using emulation, and that gives us a lot of flexibility. And it allows you, of course, as an application developer, also to use the exact same techniques to build your own um, to build your own control. So, if I would, for instance, similar to what you just did in, in C++, of course, we subclass things by declaring our own classes. So, if I just uh, start here with 
with a Q line edit, for instance, in my case, subclass, and I give that a private member that is a search icon, pixmap, um, which I initialize with a PNG that I happen to have lying around, then, you know, then I can now re-implement event handling and control, for instance, how the painting of this control or of this widget is done. So in this case here, I'm subclassing yeah, you line edit, I'm re-implementing paint event. So the first thing I need to do is now make sure that the line edit has a chance to paint its stuff, the default background, the text, and so forth, blinking cursor. And then I do similar to what you did, I need to figure out where do I want to put this um, this icon here. In my case, I need to ask the style. Where is the style drawing the line edit input field? And then I need to make some space here and draw basically this icon on top of it here. Um, with the draw pixmap call. So this is a very imperative way of painting stuff, um, one element at a time. One of the challenges I have here now, if we just run this code, um, let's hope it works. No, we, we won't see anything yet because I haven't used that, that uh, search field anywhere yet. So let's just add that to the status bar for sake of simplicity as a permanent widget. Um, new search field. So if we now run the code, we should see the this new search field here at the right side of the status bar. Here we are, including the little magnifying glass, which doesn't look very good, but it is uh, it is good enough. So um, I can now, of course, write text, and it will go over this icon, or rather under the icon, because the icon is drawing it that. If I want to modify how this line edit lays out its contents, um, I would not only have to subclass Q line edit, I would also have to subclass a style and modify this implementation here, sub element rect, and tell the line edit to make a bit of space um, somewhere else and so forth. So I would suddenly start implementing several classes that are then somewhat tightly coupled to each other. Um, so it is a lot more work. And then if I want to throw in some CS at the same time, I'm suddenly looking at three different technologies or, or, or frameworks that I need to be familiar with. That is definitely not something where a designer is going to help me. Let's just put it like that. I might you know, be able to, of course, do what the designer wants me to do using all these very low level C++ APIs, but it's going to be my job and it's not going to be a very integrated uh, flow with lots of fast feedback and collaboration. Okay. So what, I, what I'm seeing from you here is a lot more um, fun to work together with someone else on and a lot more quickly done as well because everything is actually very nicely integrated. Yeah, for sure. It takes a lot less code to do it and like I talked about as well, even the designer can look at this code and understand what's going on. He can jump in and he can fix up small tweaks here and there. He doesn't need to know like C++ or low level development to be able to contribute on the style directly. And that will shorten the iteration between the designer and the developer, and they will be able to work together much faster, which is also a good strength with QML, I would say. Absolutely. And that is also, I think, um, supporting a lot of what we have seen um, the future being for desktop application development, where where a design-driven user interface approach, um, where consistent look and feel across the different platforms on which you might be building your service or your application is actually starting to become more and more important or has already for the last couple of years become more and more important. The applications being developed for the mobile space, especially consumer application, and then you know there will also be a version of that on the desktop that should have a similar look and feel. Yeah. Um, branding, customization, in addition to desktop applications requiring more customization for domain-specific tasks, that yeah. kind of stuff is definitely going to be very important in the future as well. Yeah, absolutely. We see more and more of the, those kind of things. And uh, even though it's still important for uh, developers or application developers to have the native style available, they will more and more like to brand their application, like you have Spotify, like you have Facebook, like other applications. They want to have their own personal look and feel. Of the whole user interface. So you need both. And when uh, this is an important point for application developer to brand their application and style it, it should be easy to brand and style it. It cannot be, you cannot uh, expect them to write, you know, pages and pages of C++ code to achieve that. That will just not fly, basically. Um, so that is the core strength, I think, with the uh, with controls too and the styling framework is so easy and it's fun and uh, quick to develop new styles and tweak the styles. All right. but, uh, but still, Volker, I mean, widgets has been around for, uh, like you said, 25 years or so, and uh, it has survived despite the fact that the, the world has changed a lot since then. You have uh, mobile phones coming, you have tablets, 
you have the whole uh, web uh, uh, frameworks, all the web frameworks and the internet. And But what do you think are the main reasons as to why we just has managed to stay so relevant on desktop for such a long period of time? Yeah, I think the strength of widgets is actually the strength of Qt in many ways. Um, and also Qt Quick will and sits on top of the same things that make working with widgets fun and easy easy to do. So Qt's core feature, signals and slots, um, as an example, makes it easy to build reusable components. That has definitely been something that has been benefiting widgets. Many of the core UI framework features in Qt, like dynamic layouts, uh, internationalization support, support for accessibility, these kind of things are hygiene features that UI frameworks simply have to support, making sure that your um, applications behave native, are good citizens in your desktop. These are things that are part of Qt as much as they are part of Qt widgets. So um, these are these are really important and these, these continue to be important. And also to be very clear about it, widgets are not going to go away anytime soon. No. Um, in Qt 6, we will have widgets and we will continue to maintain and, and make sure that the widgets applications are awesome also on the next version of Mac OS or on Windows and so forth. Um, one of the strengths with widgets, of course, is that um, integration with other APIs comes very natural because these other APIs are C++ or C APIs in many cases. So mixing your application where you have certain components coming from legacy MFC or Motif or Mac OS uh, native uh, UI elements, that is something that is definitely a strength for widgets. And we know that many of our customers and users are doing this today. Um, and generally, the, the emulation approach has been a very good contributor to, to Qt Widget success because it, 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 the result of this approach is to have a very flexible API, a very consistent API that works exactly the same across all the different platforms while giving you as an application developer all the, all the power and all the flexibility you need to do customizations and build your own controls. So it is still lots of fun to build widgets APIs with Qt widgets, uh, widget, uh, widget UIs with, uh, with C++ also in Qt 6 and also in the future. Yeah. But what about controls, uh, Rikard? What makes controls uh, a good and perhaps in the future even better choice for building desktop applications? Well, I would say first and foremost, uh, controls as a modern graphics layering architecture that uh, uses uh, the deep GPU to its maximum. And now that we have the new render hardware interface in uh, Qt, applications written with controls will run on the most optimal graphics hardware on your machine. So like the example I was showing just now, it run on top of Metal since I'm running my application on the Mac OS platform. And if I were to run that same application on Windows, it will run on top of Direct uh, 3D. So this means that the controls will be very fast and efficient. And you also have the ability to mix in fancy graphical effects, writing your own shaders, for example. And uh, you can even uh, now mix in Qt Quick 3D. And so that is a big strength with, uh, with the controls, I would say, compared to widgets that we are running on top of a better graphics uh, architecture. And, and that, is, that is definitely going to be to be a killer feature in the future. I mean, we, we already look now at multiple displays with 4K resolution. Um, that's a lot of pixels to push. And Qt widgets sitting on top of a software renderer, you know, as many fantastic features as that renderer has, um, it is definitely going to be a limiting factor in the future. So moving to a hardware accelerated architecture to a scene graph, yeah. That is anyway something that is a much more declarative approach than than building imperative um, rendering commands using a painter in, in the Qt widget world. So while at the same time having all the good features from Qt that we have for UI framework development, good keyboard handling, good shortcut handling, support for accessibility and internationalization, these yeah. are all hygiene factors for us um, that are really important. and. Working with some applications that have not been written with Qt and are living on the desktop, you know, yeah, some of this keyboard handling is <laughs> leaves uh, leaves things to be desired. Let's put it like that. Yeah. So, what's next? Are we are we there yet? Are we having controls on the same level as widgets, or what's missing? What are the next steps? Do you think, Ricard? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we see this uh, porting on native styles, Mac OS all Windows styles to controls as like a first step out of many to bring controls on par with widgets for desktop development. That's our main goal. We want to make sure that controls in the future is a just as good alternative for writing desktop applications as widgets, basically. But we still have some way to go, I would say, uh, for this first version now with Qt 6. 
not all the controls will have native styling. There will be some controls that will fall back to use the Fusion style. Those are the controls that we didn't have support for in Q style from before. So we need to do some extra work there. Okay. And so, uh, <clears throat> know that it's important for a native look application to have native dialogues, native menus. Those are the things we also need to work on. And we have already started uh, working on uh, the usage of native dialogues and implementing native dialogues. Uh, but uh, already now, I would say controls have a pretty rich set of components. You have many different controls you can use, actually more than widgets, I think. And, but still, there are some uh, controls that are more profound on desktop for desktop development that are missing. So I hope that we get around in the future also to look more into which controls we should uh, develop that is a better fit for desktop. Those that are missing, those that we see that we have in widgets today, those that we see that are in a lot in use on the native platforms, in native toolkits, new user interface paradigms, for example. Mm. Well, there's, there are many things to do, but as I said, uh, we see this as like the first step out of many to make desktop development for uh, controls a very good viable alternative. All right, so that's the strategy. Make Qtquick controls the first class toolkit, also for desktop application developers. Um, on the desktop, plenty of work to be done there still, but the 6.0 release sets the first stone, and now uh, we continue from there. Thank you very much for the chat, Ricard. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We see you in the Q&A session. Have a fantastic afternoon. Bye-bye. See you all.